Well, hello. Um, I am a singer, and uh, I have heard quite a few times in the last little while uh, that one of the descriptions of me is one is um, one of the most recognizable voices in Canadian music. And it's taken me a very long time to not be deeply offended by that. Uh, people mean it well because because your voice is you. But like I said, remember the first time you heard your voice played back on a tape recorder or an answering machine and you went, I sound like that? I thought I sounded like this and all of a sudden I sound like this. And I would walk down the street and people would say, hey, and they'd do an impersonation of me. It sounded like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> I love Kermit, but it's not who I thought I sounded like. Um, the human voice is a terrifying thing. It's uh, something that is so deeply personal. It's you. You know, your body is you, and that's one thing. And I mean, I am also known as one of the most recognizable bodies in Canada. <laughs> mostly for the hunchback. I watched the video for Enid and I see myself doing this in it. And, uh, anyways, um, but uh, I do hold the record, by the way, for the, in, the, in the Canada fitness tests for the world's shortest flex arm hang. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but they're very connected, your, your body and, and your voice. And, uh, you know, I, I, when we make music, we make music, we sit and take piano lessons, or we become virtuoso violinists or percussionists or whatever else. These are all wonderful, expressive things, and I have so much uh, respect for those who can uh, coax human emotion, a human expression, out of something that's not them. It's a tool, an external tool. Um, when you're using your own voice, it's a double-edged sword because we can all do it. So we sit in the audience and think, I can do that. And you can. You absolutely can. If I was to ask you to do it right now, though, you'd probably be a little bit embarrassed. Just like I remember the first time as a kid um, uh, sitting in on the floor, cross-legged in the school auditorium, and an opera singer came uh, to sing for us. And this woman stood in front of this group of uh, third and fourth graders and opened her mouth, and this sound came out. And it was huge and terrifying. And our reaction, I'll, we'd all seen the cartoons and the TV shows where pe people weep. You know, I'm here at the Sony Center where I, I used to see operas all the time as a younger adult, and I'd weep at these beautiful voices. But as a nine-year-old, um, I laughed. Because that voice, that it's like so that may as well, they may as well have farted <laughs> at that point and it's so deeply carnal and personal and they just threw it in your face they mean it and they're expressing all kinds of other things you know the choices of notes the way they use phrasing um but i realized as i just did there that i uh i could do that thing a little bit i mean it's a, it was a bit of a joke but it was a great opportunity for me to terrorize my younger brother. You know, like I used to do the, the usual stuff, like, you know, sit in the back seat and just put my hand in front of his face until, you know, he'd start crying or something like that. Or even better, sitting in synagogue on Yom Kippur, the holiest, uh, most solemn day of the year, and put my thumbs up right in front of his prayer book. And I tell him, oh, sure, just get, I'll, I'll move it. All you have to do is slap it really hard. Um, knowing he'd get in trouble. But it was even easier for me to be at home and go, ah! and he'd be like terrified and begging my parents to not leave the house. Um, so I realized I had this as kind of, a, it was like a weapon at first. Um, and, then, uh, and then when I joined the Bare Naked Ladies and we, uh, we had this sense of harmony that, uh, that, that happened, that it was natural. That it wasn't just about the voice as comedy. The, it was about the voice blending and that these things that we did inside of our bodies uh, came out in the air and mixed in a way that we couldn't have predicted. 
I had some classical training. I could read music and, and all that technical training, trying to find what makes the voice um, emotive, what makes it attach to other people and move them uh, is a worthwhile discipline. Um, but at the end of the day, the practice of it, uh, when you can actually let go of thinking about the phrasing and the tuning and the notes and the timing and just do it, singing in a choir like I did in high school and letting that take you away was a, a, a pretty uh, incredible experience. And it was an experience I wanted more and more of. Um, so, you know, singers are people who eventually lose some of the embarrassment of using their bodies to do something in front of other people. Um, but at the end of the day, also singers are master manipulators. They're, uh, they can change the mood by being actors. I'll be honest, they are liars. Singers, I mean, you, sometimes they're not. When John Lennon sings in uh, I Should Have Known Better, when he goes, ah, you know, he means it. He's not, he, it sounds stupid when I do it because I do it out of context. When he does it, the world is rocking and he is filled with that sound. When Aretha Franklin sings, even on a bad day, something happens and it takes me to a better place. Um, when Mick Jagger puts on a fake Southern accent, he doesn't do it to make you think he thinks he's Southern. He does it in a way to put a wall up, to say, these are things I've observed, but I'm playing a character here, and that's what we do. I used to do things on stage just to make people uncomfortable sometimes. We'd do a Christmas show and finish the, song, finish the show with a big, a big song, and then I would end it with Silent Night. But, of course, Silent Night should be intense and small and beautiful, and I would sing, so and the audience, I could see them kind of going, oh, that sounds kind of beautiful. It's big, right? So it must be beautiful. And, and then you could sing, you know, holy night. And they'd go, that's not right. <laughs> and then I'd go, oh, it's calm. And you could see them go, oh, shoot. And it was like the greatest feeling, but you feel a little bit like Andy Kaufman, like I just took advantage of them. But... But that's kind of the whole point. It's over the top. But that's what we, we do as, as singers. You know, it's not always an evil thing. We, as, as, as vocalists, use our voices not just to try to manipulate an audience, but to push uh, a certain feeling. I can't come on stage and feel the sadness that is in the lyrics and the melody of a certain song every time. And I can't feel the joy instantly every time. I have to fool myself as well as the audience. You have to kind of overcome a certain sense of anxiety. I mean, they always talk about in envisioning the audience in their underwear, and that's not, it's, it's kind of an odd thing, but really what it's about, I think, is, is power. Gives this person up here a bit of sense of power over the people there. But the people there have the great opportunity sometimes of having power over the singer, either by disapproving, but more importantly, by sharing. There's a point when the singer can actually transmute, can actually be taken away, and that is what the singer is aiming for, and doesn't always achieve, but when you feel that moment where you are lost in song, you forget where you are. Did I sing that third verse already? Not because I'm thinking about what I have to do next, but because I'm in there, and parts of the audience are in there, too. And I'm going to sing you a little bit of something, and um, I won't overanalyze it, but I'll give you a sense of what I'm talking about. Now, you know, I, I've, I also write songs, and I've been very in, uh, lucky to have been involved. Sorry for the noise. That was not my voice. I've been very lucky to have been involved in, in, in some very popular songs. And, 
you know, when I was in the Very Naked Ladies, especially, we would come out and we would sing these songs and they meant different things to different people. And it's kind of addicting and that's that same thing. It's that feeling of, of singing the song and remembering the feeling of when it took you somewhere. And that can be you in the audience. It could be me up here. It can be the listening experience. Or it can be this performance. And I like it the best when it's the both. But there's a song I wrote that says, um, On top for forever fantasy of no never wait till you hear the chorus girl see rhythmically it's it's kind of conversational right so you're kind of a love song with some stroke a snowdrop to make you choke but just wait till you hear the chorus girl There'll be no waiting limos No No cocaine and discos No I gave that all up for the chorus girl See, and the secret there is, I mean, obviously, I gave a little bit of myself away, right? But, but I can't pretend that, like, I didn't know I did. Because that's disingenuous, right? And that's, you know, that's when the lie becomes something that's the, the, that it doesn't need to be. All it has to be is that you can put a little bit of something in where you feel the audience knows you a bit. But they don't necessarily need to know everything, right? You try to ignore her, derided those who adore her. But soon you'll come around to the chorus girl. Look out of the window. The people move down below Each one is in love with the chorus girl The poor become wealthy oh. The sick become healthy oh. But don't crucify the chorus girl so At this point, I'm thinking about how to get that back, that feeling, because I've had it and I want it again, but I just don't have the secret. At night all alone With my microphone I never come close To the chorus girl I'm waiting for you now Oh there's nothing to do now, oh, oh, but save your breath for the chorus girl. I'm waiting for you now, oh, there's nothing to do. Save your breath 
before the chorus came. That's, unfortunately, that's all I have. Um, Because I, I, I knew it was supposed to do that, bah, and then blow up into that big chorus, and everybody sings. And, but I don't know if I just got lazy or, or forgetful. I do, I do get scattered sometimes, or like maybe I thought it was done, and, but <laughs> it wasn't. I mean, I got to sing the big note, but but it doesn't really do its job unless you know you can kind of be part of it, and, that, and that's. That's what the song's about. It's not just about the chorus girl, right? It's about the chorus girl. Um, it's about looking for that thing that uh, that connects people. Like I was saying, I've been part of songs that have been part of other people's lives. You know, the, it's, it's your first year in university. It's the theme song to your family camping trip. It's it, the one pop song your grandma knows, you know, whatever. Like you might not, you might not even like it, but it's there and it's in your life. And then I can come up and sing, and you guys can come and sit in a room like this, and everybody's disparate experiences all mixed together in the air, like voices, their inner voices, those memories. And I can't control those; those are yours, and it's the greatest feeling to be able to give that away. It's not totally selfless. I mean, obviously I want more, but but it feels great to know that it doesn't have to be about me or mine, that if I can be a facilitator in some way, that's a great feeling. But, and maybe that's why I got scared with this song. And, you know, obviously the thing that's missing from the song is the chorus. And then one day I just, I said to myself, Stephen, Enough. Enough with the self-deprecating crap. Time to uh, look inside yourself. Look inside the song. There's a chorus there. There's been a chorus there all along. And it goes... La, 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 la. La 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 Yeah, yeah, you can sing it along if you want. I can teach you the words. La 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 we can do it in french if you want but i know it's toronto so that's kind of been useless la 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 now reach out and grab the hand of the person next to you. Actually, unless you don't know them, because that's creepy. <laughs>
Thank you very much, everybody.